today's video, we're going to be checking out the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 7. This is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, Leatherface. The figure is roughly about six inches in height. And for accessories, he comes with one of the more complex display pieces that have come with a Movie Maniacs figure. In this way, or in this case, we've got ourselves a door frame here in which Leatherface has his reveal. Uh, the door frame has a little bit of construction that's required. Essentially, when you're getting it out of packaging, you've got your main bottom floorboard with the peg holes or pegs in place there for his feet. The door frame comes with two parts, the bottom half, the top half, the well, top half right there, that involves having to assemble those two pieces together. You've got also the corner piece that runs down the, well, the back end of the display. And then you've got a series of cardboard panels, two in total. One slides into the side, one slides into the back. The only downside though is they didn't really finish the other ends of the cardboard display. So really in the case of turning the figure around, which you probably won't end up doing anyways, you unfortunately just see cardboard. There's no additional print. If they had done something a little bit differently, you could have maybe printed both sides. Ultimately, they only printed the one side. The construction is a little e well, it's somewhat easy to get this part in. The more trickier end of it is lining up the cardboard parts, lining it down the one slotted groove here and fitting it in the groove successfully down at the bottom here. Same thing can be said for the side. It doesn't also give you a whole lot of clearance as well. You can see where the pegs will sit and Leatherface's feet will plug into place. It doesn't really give you much clearance at all. A lot of times what you may end up having to do is take the panels out completely, slide those out completely, fit Leatherface in first, and then put the panels around him. Just because if you look at the figure here, which currently I've cheated and just got him on a display stand because he doesn't really stand all that well. Fitting him in place, if you are fitting him like this, for example, it doesn't give you a whole lot of cle clearance here before he starts butting up against the cardboard panels. So you may find it more easier to actually fit him in first, then put the panels in afterwards. Some actually nice details here on the, the base itself. In all intents and purposes, I mean, really, you could just leave the panels off completely and just have an open door frame. Or what you can also do is just take this off completely, unpeg this, which is just actually slotted here. Pull this out very carefully not really supposed to be pulled in and out on a regular basis. You may only want to do this once, but untab this, untab this, like that. You could leave it like this, or you can also, look at me now, I'm just basically dismantling the whole thing. Or you could have just yourself a regular flo floorboard in which you can stand the figure on top of. It looks a little drabby and a little boring from the front of it, but uh, at least you've got the floorboard just to kind of work for uh, a, a makeshift display base. You know, you could just have something like that, for example. The real money, though, is the fact that it's got all that extra components. So repeating all that, you're going to take the tab points here, the two tabs on either side, and those will fit into the holes provided on the base. Snap those into place. Because the nature of the plastic that they use, it doesn't feel like... It feels like it could be potentially brittle, more softer plastic that doesn't really have a whole lot of forgiving bend to it. So again, I wouldn't probably take that apart, put it together too often. And then lastly, you're gonna just fit this in. Luckily, the angle in which the slot fits in tells you exactly which way it's supposed to go. And just kind of, there we go, plant that in. And you've got yourself the very cool display base again. We'll leave the cardboard panels off for the time being, but just there's a close look at what the panels look like. This one's not as interesting as this one here, but again, it gives you a little bit of options for how to display it. Okay, so let's have a look at Leatherface here. Now, I did do a review of this guy before. This was a long time ago, granted. 
and it was in the time of standard definition in which the video looked a little grainier, a little rougher, so I thought it would be a good time to kind of go back and have a look at the figure. Normally, I would also indicate that the accessory would have been the chainsaw. I'm not considering at all the idea of trying to take it out of his hands, showing you the chainsaw, and then trying my best to fit it back into his hands. It would fit in there. I mean, it's just a matter of... Okay, okay. It's just a matter of fitting it actually in between his hands, but this hand's a little bit harder to get the chainsaw into versus this hand right here. Chainsaw looks good, actually. It's got a nice rusted look to it, heavily saturated in blood. The coloring I can only describe is almost kind of a... Well, it looks like the bottom or main coloring of it is almost a slightly bluish, discolored silver. I do like that it's got that little wrapped up portion down below for the handle. Some nice silver accents added there as well. And, of course, the blood all over the place. Yes, I suppose I could easily just pull the chainsaw off to show you. I think it'd just be much easier and a lot more, a lot less stress for this reviewer just to simply leave it in place. Having a look at his face. His face is actually pretty good. Minus, of course, some additional coloring that could have gone a long way. I feel like he's got a little bit more browns in his face and not necessarily the pale complexion that we're seeing right here. McFarlane seems really good about making Leatherface certainly considerably pale because we've looked at the movie Maniac Series 1 Leatherface and, of course, a much older figure, yes, but he was also featuring a very pale-looking face. Got nice stitching there around Leatherface's side of his face, uh, stitching up at the top there as well. Face is passable for Leatherface. It's not, it's not overly scary. It's kind of very a uh, calmer kind of more relaxed leather face, if anything. His outfit consists of a striped shirt, a pair of blue slacks, a pair of almost work boots, I suppose, with a tread on the underside. There's your peg holes as well. And he's got this really cool apron. The apron is a softer plastic, although you cannot take it off, and it's been stitched, or I should say, tied up on the back there. Paint is generous here on this particular figure. He's got some washes of a more dirtier brown added to his shirt, so his shirt doesn't look too pristine. And he's also got some of that brown also carried over into his pants, where he's got some nice wrinkles and stuff added there. The frayed bottom portion of his, of his pants also are a nice touch, and I do like the fact that they gave texturing to his boots, not just relying on just a very smooth-looking boot. Nice details there also on the boots, and there's, once again, the under treads. This guy doesn't have a whole lot in the way of posability, unfortunately. Posability on this guy, his head rotates left and right. His arms do hinge. Well, there is a hinge up at the top here on his elbow, and he's got a hinge here on his hand. The nature of the way that you're pegging the or attaching the chainsaw into place it really doesn't allow for a lot of uh, additional wiggle room. You can't get super posable with this guy. I suppose you could. You could probably detach the chainsaw from the one hand. Oh, I just don't like doing this. Detach it from the one hand, and again, you could have it just kind of, you know, you could have him just holding it. But then the other hand just seems like, what are you going to do with it, really? It can rotate, but it's not in any sort of comfortable rotation, other than the fact of perhaps he wants to show off his rings. Leatherface has a good series of rings on his finger. Every finger, in fact, has rings on him. So yeah, even though he does have that, he doesn't really have the necessary... Uh, the necessary uh, sort of uh, posing for the other hand in which that you can really do anything other than just having both hands attached to the chainsaw. That's really what the display base is suited for. It's for having him holding it. But again, the problem with getting now the chainsaw back onto his hand, his hand always wants to close shut on me. Get it back in there. Get it together, man. Get it together. Taking myself a bit of a pause just to kind of get everything back in place. There we go. There we go. Looks, looks quite good. Now again, going to attaching him Put the display base around. You've got your pegs there. Again, it's a lot easier, I find, to attach. You have to kind of make sure the chainsaw is sticking forward. Attach his feet to the pegs first with a lot of squeaking, a lot of squeaking, and then once you've got everything in place, then you can go ahead and add the boards. I really wouldn't add the boards first, the back wall first, and then try to put a leather face in. It just simply won't work. 
spin the figure around, then you can slot everything in. These slots just don't, you may find yourself kind of pulling it out, readjusting it, sliding it back in. And take this, that slides down the side groove. This one's a little trickier of the two. And getting it around Leatherface's feet, slide that into place, make sure it's no, nothing's sticking out further from the edge. And you've got yourself a really nice display piece featuring the remake Leatherface. Movie Maniac figures were never really intended to be superposable figures. A lot of times you might just find them to be slightly posable statues. But I think the point here is a much more the case for Leatherface from the remake, in the sense that this guy's really more so a display piece than he is a figure. Sure, he does have some posability, but he really doesn't have a whole heck of a lot. Uh, really, and factoring in the display base, which is really one of the coolest display bases we've got with a Movie Maniacs figure, this guy is really more for display. Put him inside the opening of the door frame and just leave him be. And that's probably how a lot of collectors have him displayed. Sure, you could probably just have him loose and probably just freely out on display. But I would probably say use a display stand if that be the case, because this guy just doesn't really stand all that well on his own. Getting a display base or getting a display bottom, something that he could affix his feet to, Definitely would make uh, for a much more stable looking leather face. Still got some really nice design elements to it. The icing on the cake, of course, is the diorama base that he stands inside of. He's really a great looking piece if you're able then to go back and pick this guy up. He's a little bit older. He's not as old, of course, as the Movie Maniacs uh, Series 1 figures. This is Series 7 after all. But finding this guy on eBay, it's not going to overly break the bank. You could probably find Leatherface here for about a $20 to $30 price point. There's no guarantee, of course. Don't quote me to that. Don't go to eBay and say, oh, I found one for $15. Congratulations, you found one for $15. But the price point on this guy, the point I'm trying to make, is that he's not an overly expensive movie, movie maniac figure. You can find this guy, and he's not going to basically kill your wallet picking him up. Today, though, we were having a look at the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 7. This is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, Leatherface. If you guys like videos like this, certainly hit it with a like down below. And if you haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button, you are missing out not only on other horror figure reviews, but also other reviews on this channel as well. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. If you also want to check out some more Movie Maniac reviews, I've got a playlist here on the channel as well that you can go and check out. i am actually got those, or I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be sorting those playlists out by series. So I think what I'll do is uh, Movie Maniacs Series 1 playlist, Movie Maniac Series 2 playlist, and eventually until all the Movie Maniac reviews are eventually done or redone in some instances. So if you guys ever want to check out specifically one wave, you can just go to the playlist and it'll have all those broken down by their series. Again, guys, lots more videos to come. Always thanks for watching. Always thanks for reading your comments and commenting down below. I always like reading your comments. I'll see you guys next time.